Welcome my dear students uh, for the last lecture of fundamental of econometrics uh, uh, in week 16 which is the last week of this lecture we uh, were supposed to have two lectures uh, that were overview of two important topic of uh, uh, econometrics and we uh, in our previous lecture that was the first lecture of week 16 we discussed uh, uh, we, we rather than discussing in detail having an overview of cross-sectional data models uh, which were covering uh, chapter 8 to chapter 12 of uh, our course uh, book uh, econometrics by example today we are going to have our last lecture and that lecture would be on topics uh, in time series econometrics uh, which will be covering the chapters 313 to chapter 17 of your textbook uh, before uh, starting uh, the lecture of today i will be quickly uh, uh, revising a few things which we covered uh, in our uh, previous lecture uh, rather than revising I will be just mentioning that uh, uh, in our previous lecture that was an overview of cross-sectional data models uh, we discussed qualitative response regression models within which we discussed uh, uh, binary logic and probit models after having a certain discussion on linear probability models and its limitation then we extended our understanding of uh, logit and probit used for binary response models uh, binary response dependent variable we extended it to uh, uh, dependent variable that have more than two outcomes and we uh, briefly uh, get introduced to the models called multinomial logit and probit models and their different versions based on the variations in data uh, of uh, individual or the choices which these individual selects or or having mixed uh, models from it uh, we also uh, did uh, got introduced to what we call ordered regression models in which we uh, rather than have an order choice uh, if we are confronted with a dependent variable that is in order as well in that case we have to use order regression model uh, and uh, yeah, under qualitative response regression model we uh, briefly uh, 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 came to know that okay we have some models in which we can model a two choice decision where one choice decision is dependent on the first choice decision and we uh, we saw how the state logic model uh, look like uh, and then uh, we also discussed the censored model and truncated sample regression models that fall under the limited dependent variable regression model finally we talked about uh, uh, models in which our dependent variables are account variable and for that we use Python or negative binomial models and to remind you this was in overview so all the discussion of previous lecture was more of the overview rather than uh, telling you exactly how to apply these model or uh, discussing these in more uh, detail or uh, having more in-depth knowledge of it all the interested uh, student uh, in uh, any of these model are strongly advised to consult the textbook uh, it has a very good example and data available that you can apply uh, to see uh, the implications of these model i will be continuing uh, this overview now to uh, move to uh, the time series uh, uh, models today uh, the topic is time series uh, econometric models so i will be uh, showing you some topics related to time series econometrics now uh, as i told you in the previous lecture as well that this is a big area of econometrics and uh, perhaps we could have one or two courses on time series econometrics so it's uh, literally impossible to uh, have an overview of each and everything that uh, time series uh, econometrics may provide uh, you uh, or us so uh, the topics which I'm going to present in today's lecture are mainly uh, those topics that are covered uh, uh, in uh, our course textbook so uh, this is just the introduction of their topics by no mean it's not an extensive discussion on these topics uh, so uh, let me show you the topics which we are going to cover first we are going to see some background and we will be getting introduced to stationarity and non-stationarity of time series 
then we are going to talk about uh, uh, configuration and error correction models then asset price volatility the arch and garch models then uh, forecasting using linear regression model box jinxon models and war or vector auto regressive model panel data models and then survival analysis so these are a few topics that what I, uh, I will be introducing you, uh, not very much detail uh, except one or two topics. Uh, the topics are very much uh, to the introduction level. So let me start with the first topic, which is the stationarity and non-stationarity of the time series. So uh, uh, perhaps you can recall that uh, we uh, keep on saying that in particularly when we were studying uh, autocorrelation topic that the time series data uh, mostly uh, uh, time series data or uh, most uh, economic time series are non-stationary. Now the question arises that what is a non-stationary? So non-stationary refers to the characteristics of a time series that uh, uh, the time series over a period of time uh, do not have a constant mean or variance over a period of time. So what does I mean by that? Let me try to explain it with a simple example. For example, uh, if I have here uh, the time and I have here the uh, let's say variable y uh, which is a time series so we say that normally this time series move like this over a period of time so uh, we say that uh, this time series do not have the mean and variance constant over a period of time so what does we mean by that let's say I take some interval so these are few intervals the mean here or here or here will not remain the same why it will not remain the same look at the values the values here are just in this range but the value here are uh, in this range a higher range and then the further higher range so every time i will be getting different mean or variance in this particular uh, time series hypothetical time series so we said that the constant and way uh, the mean and variance would not be constant in each of these interval or in simple word we say that the uh, mean and variance are not constant over a period of time so we say that uh, such kind of time series is a non-stationary and if uh, this is constant over a period of time we say that this time series is stationary so such series often exhibit in upward or downward trend over a sustained period of time. This is an upward trend. You could have uh, a time series that has a, a downward trend. For example, uh, something like uh, this. So you can see then uh, an upward and then a continuously downward trend. So uh, both kind of uh, things are possible uh, and uh, this is important to note that uh, such trend are stochastic in nature and they are not a deterministic stochastic refers to uh, uh, randomness so it's random in nature and it's not a deterministic so that's uh, about the stationarity now this is a key point uh, regressing a non-stationary time series on one or more non-stationary time series may often lead to the phenomena of spurious or meaningless regressions. We already studied uh, in during autocorrelation as well uh, the phenomena of spurious or nonsense regression. So F2 time series are non-stationary and we run uh, a regression model uh, between these two uh, uh, time series we will be getting what we call spurious regression or meaningless regression uh, or in other words we will be getting a very good fit for our model but actually there may be not uh, any strong uh, a relationship among these variables uh, uh, because of the non-stationary nature of these variables uh, the variable will be moving together over a period of time and we will be ending up uh, finding strong relationship among these variables whereas actually there will be no uh, actual relation among these variables so this was uh, uh, the phenomena of uh, uh, time series, uh, non-stationary and stationary background, then uh, we said that there are some diagnostic tools that can be used to know the stationarity and non-stationarity of time series. So uh, the first uh, diagnostic tool we can use is time series plot that you plot a data and you see if it's uh, having certain trend or not and based on that you can find it as I uh, roughly did it here on top of uh, this slide. 
so that may give you some idea that this series have trend so that may not be stationary so that's an ad hoc way of looking into it uh, another way of looking into it uh, to to do a more uh, good uh, uh, graphical analysis is to use autocorrelation function at correlogram autocorrelation function or acf refers to uh, the autocorrelation coefficients of different lags so you can think of having uh, a row row one row two row three i hope you remember row where row refers to the uh, correlation between ut and ut minus one so similarly you can think of ut and ut minus 2 and ut ut minus 3 ut u minus 4 so you get all kind of this uh, for a longer period of time this uh, uh, autocorrelation coefficients and then uh, you plot them so autocorrelation function refers to uh, these values and then if you plot them against the time you get a graph which is called correlogram so uh, correlogram suggests a correlation of time series over several leg decay quickly or slowly so then we see if the correlation among these lag values or these row values fall or uh, do not fall over a period of time if it fall quickly we say that uh, they may be stationary if they fall slowly we say that they may not be stationary so uh, uh, if, if, if it does decay very slowly perhaps the time series is a non-stationary as I just uh, said uh, uh, beside the graphical analysis we have some two uh, we have some statistical test for uh, stationarity there are a lot of uh, tests available in new software as well uh, the most popular one are called unit root test and these unit root tests the more fundamental one are dicky fuller and augmented dicky fuller uh, tests uh, that are applied for checking if a particular time series is stationary or if it is a non-stationary so uh, uh, after uh, the diagnostic uh, test a time series may be found to be stationary uh, but trending so we can remove the trend by simply regressing that time series on the time or trend variable so this is a few tips which can be applied uh, uh, while you find if a time series is uh, non-stationary or become stationary and having a trend uh, uh, further uh, discussion uh, wouldn't be uh, uh, undertaken uh, with this particular uh, or this small introduction of non-stationarity for the reason uh, as I said it earlier that it's just an introduction so the take home from this particular uh, slides on stationarity and non-stationarities are that uh, whenever you are confronted uh, to use a time series uh, variables in your data you should be suspecting that it may be uh, stationary or non-stationary and then uh, if it's a non-stationary you could have uh, some diagnostic tools being used uh, for fixing the problem to first identifying the problem of uh, uh, stationarity and then perhaps you maybe figure out how to fix that uh, we are not going to discuss the fixing of that uh, at this stage now then uh, the second concept after knowing the stationarity and non-stationarity time series is contiguration so before discussing contiguration we just uh, discuss it uh, a while ago that when you regress uh, when you regress to uh, variables uh, or when you formulate a model from two time series variables that are non-stationary you may end up finding a spurious regression now contiguration is a, a, a different case in this we say that there is a unique case when regressions that are non-stationary when we get a, a regression of a non-stationary time series and uh, uh, the result of the regression model is a not a spurious regression or in other words sometime there may be a true relationship exists between two non-stationary variables so if we run a model and we get a non-spurious regression in that particular case we call that these are uh, uh, these variables or these time series are contigrated so uh, this is this situation is called uh, contigration uh, so if two time series have stochastic trend that's uh, they are non-stationary a regression of one on the other may cancel out the stochastic trend uh, that may suggest that there is a long run equilibrium relationship between them and even though individually they two series are non-stationary so we call this a case of a, a 
configuration. Uh, after the configuration, we uh, may think about the error correction model. So error correction model or error correction uh, mechanism. Uh, uh, Gringer uh, representation theory fall under it. So if two variables y and x are configurated, so when we have two known stationary time series and there is a unique relationship or long-term equilibrium between these two variables, so we say x and y are configurated. So once we have the variables being configurated, once we confirm the two variables are integrated, then the relation between the two variables can be expressed as an error correction mechanism or error correction model. So uh, in simple word, when we have two variables and they are integrated, so non-stationary but having long-term relationship or equilibrium relation between these two variables, so we call that these two variables are integrated. And then once two variables are integrated, then we can apply the error correction model or ECM. So error correction model or error correction mechanism, uh, what it is, it postulates that changes in dependent variable depend on changes in the independent variable and the leg equilibrium error term. So all you do in error correction model that you uh, regress the dependent uh, change in dependent variable on the change in independent variable and the leg equilibrium error term in your model with ut minus one. Uh, and then if the error term is zero, there will be uh, there will not be any disequilibrium between the two variables. And in the case, uh, the long term relationship will be given by the configuration uh, relationship. Uh, but if the error correct uh, error term is a known zero, uh, the relationship between the two variable will be out of equilibrium in long run. So that was uh, for the two variables. If we have more than two variables, then we use what we call vector error correction model or VECM. Uh, so this was a brief uh, introduction to the error correction model that are used when you have two variables that are integrated with one another. Uh, then uh, under the time series econometrics, uh, one more topic that is of prime interest for uh, the uh, people working in finance sector is the asset prices volatility measurement and the arch gauge model. I have just very brief uh, introduction to it. Uh, the background is that volatility uh, clustering concept is used here so volatility clustering is a concept that refers to the periods of turbulence in which prices show wide swings and periods of uh, tranquility in which there is a relatively calm in very simple word we uh, we have uh, situations in market where sometimes we have turbulence, there is ups and downs uh, in the prices of assets in the financial markets. Uh, so there are swings, but sometimes there are relatively stable condition and the prices remain more or less uh, pretty much claimed. So uh, that's the background. Uh, uh, we say that the time series, uh, financial time series in particularly, exhibit a phenomena of volatility clustering, like they get cluster uh, having turbulence followed by more turbulence or then having a calm uh, condition and then followed uh, a smooth uh, movement uh, in the price uh, changes. So uh, financial time series do exhibit these kind of phenomena. So. We say that the volatility result in co uh, correlation in error variance over uh, time. So when there are volatility, the error term or the error variance get correlated over a period of time. So uh, uh, we say that these volatilities or these variances could be measured using ARCH or GARCH model. What is ARCH? Uh, ARCH refers to autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model that take to into account uh, such correlation or time varying volatility. So we said that there is volatility uh, or there is a correlation of the error term uh, or error variance over a period of time when there is volatility in the market and then the arch model take into account uh, of such correlation uh, or such time varying volatility. Uh, uh, arch model show the conditional uh, own information available to time t minus 1. The value of the random variable y is function of the variable x and through that measure for volatility can be obtained. Uh, in pretty simple, simple words, uh, arch models estimate the volatility of the market where random variable y is a function of uh, explanatory variable x. Uh, in simple word, uh, arch models are used to measure the volatility of the market or the uh, risk 
uh, you can say the, uh, the it's the estimate of the variances uh, the gauge model is an advanced form of arch where uh, gauge refers to the generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model uh, at this stage i think that is more than sufficient to uh, to have the info about arch and gauge models uh, now i will uh, switch back to my main slide and now i will move to the next topic which is the forecasting uh, and that's the uh, for casting based on linear regression, Box Jensen model, and War model. So, uh, again, it's an introduction, so I will be talking about uh, uh, very brief about it. Forecasting with linear regression model is uh, a straightforward task. Uh, I think uh, we are very much familiar with the regression analysis, so we should know uh, at this stage also know that the regression could be used for forecasting as well. However, uh, there are three kind of forecasting that can be done through regression analysis. The first one is point and interval forecast. In such uh, forecasting, uh, a single value for each forecast period is provided, whereas in an interval, we set, uh, we set certain range uh, and then we say that the value fall within that range and we say that with certain level of uh, probability. Uh, then we have the forecast, which is called exposed and ex and forecast. In such kind of uh, forecast, uh, uh, in the ex post forecast period the uh, the hold over period is considered and we know the value of the regression and regressors uh, then we have the conditional and unconditional forecast in uh, in conditional forecast or the scenario analysis uh, is also called contingency analysis uh, in this we forecast the variable of interest or the dependent variable conditional on the assumed value of the regressor and uh, in unconditional forecast we just take the value of the regressor with the certainty instead of picking some random variable uh, some random arbitrary values for them and then based on that we do forecasting so this is the forecasting of linear regression model uh, three type of forecasting uh, then we can uh, think of uh, uh, the uh, second uh, forecasting uh, which is box Jensen model or uh, box Jensen methodology is also called ARMA and RIMA models I will be slightly uh, elaborating this methodology slightly more uh, uh, or I should say a bit more in detail compared to the other methodologies I discussed so this methodology was introduced by Box uh, George Box and Gowlim uh, Jinkson in early 70s uh, and you should note this that this is univariate time series uh, forecasting methodology or in other words you can use uh, only one single time series variable uh, uh, or uh, better to say this methodology could be used for only uh, one single time series variable so it's appropriate if you have one time series and you want to forecast its value you you can use this arma and arima model uh, so what does this model are uh, based on uh, the, this uh, uh, these models are called box Jensen model and it's based on uh, methodology what is called auto regressive integrated moving average or RIMA models so I will be explaining it shortly what does it mean uh, 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 in more detail on my next uh, slide so auto regressive models and moving average uh, first I will be explaining what is auto regressive then moving average and then we combine it so uh, let me start with a simple model in this model we have uh, equation one in which y is b being regressed on x1, x2 till xp uh, and this is uh, a, a standard uh, you can say a standard regression model in which y is regressed on a, a number of x variable. Uh, so now uh, we consider uh, if we replace this x1 with yt minus 1, yt minus 2 and yt minus uh, p respectively x1 for uh, uh, yt minus 1 so this is x1 uh, so similarly yt minus 2 is for x2 and then yt minus p is for xp so we can rewrite equation 1 as uh, equation 2 where yt is now uh, regress on its first lag value its second lag value and its t minus k lag value so now you can see that equation 2 uh, is only using y variable and the explanatory variable as its lag values uh, so we call such kind of uh, models as uh, autoregressive and we call it autoregressive for p p 
because y is regress on p value of the uh, y variable or p lag values of the y variable similarly we have the moving average model uh, we can think of again starting the same model in which y is regress on uh, p value of x and then we uh, think of uh, replacing x with y uh, ut minus 1 so x1 uh, ut minus 2 with x2 and then uh, ut minus q for xp and similarly you can think of uh, equation 1 having uh, ut minus 1 ut minus 2 and ut minus k and uh, we call this <coughs> moving average of order q or maq so now we have ARP process and MAQ process. When we combine these two, we call that we could have a model in which we regress YT on its P lag value and its Q lag values of the error term. Or we call it ARIMA or ARIMA of order, uh, ARMA, sorry, ARMA of order P and Q. We call this ARMA of order P and Q or moving average model of order P and Q. Now, uh, ARMA model is the basic version of uh, box Jackson methodology. Uh, it consider a time, a univariate time series for its forecasting. Uh, the, the disadvantage of this methodology is that it does not take into account the uh, stationarity of the dependent variable so uh, uh, or the y variable so to uh, consider that stationarity component of the time series uh, the advanced version of arma model were introduced which is called uh, arima uh, or uh, auto regressive integrated moving average uh, so the word integrated is being added here uh, here uh, uh, the word integrated refers to that uh, uh, now the auto regressive integrated moving average or its arima of order pdq where d stand for the order of the integration or in other word it shows that at what difference the y variable is stationary is it stationary at first difference or second difference and based on that uh, this order is determined one or two uh, so we could have a rima of order one 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 or a rima of order uh, one zero one when depending upon if the variable is stationary at the first difference or uh, at a level so there are a number of steps in box Jinxon methodology and uh, we can uh, uh, we can have a quick look of that as well. There are three steps or three phases in which box Jinxon methodology could be applied. In the first step is the identification and so the data is transformed and then uh, using SEF and PSEF we identify if uh, the, uh, the variable is stationary or if it's not stationary. Then uh, once the model is identified, what's the correct order of the lags has been identified, then the estimation is done and then uh, the estimation uh, is in, uh, uh, undertaken and the tests are applied to ensure that uh, the model which has been identified with the lag values of the dependent variables and error terms all that are relevant or all that are now ensuring that the variable uh, the, the model is uh, or the, uh, uh, the, the correct order of the ARIMA or ARMA model has been identified. So once these things are ensured then it's applied for forecasting the values. I think that's pretty much uh, the entire story of the box Jinxon or ARIMA models. Now we switch back to our original model. So uh, now we switch back to our original slide so coming back to the main slide and we saw that box Jinxon methodology is useful for when we have one time series uh, uh, this is a limitation because we can't uh, use that for uh, a case when we have more than one time series uh, so if we have to forecast uh, based on more than one time series we can't use box and models uh, instead then we use vector auto regression or war models uh, so war models deal with forecasting of two or more uh, time series in war models we have one equation for each variable and each equation contains only the lag value of that variable and the lag values of all other variables in the system so uh, instead of having single uh, arima model or arma model 
war include also the uh, the lag value of the other variables that are uh, in the model so that uh, in uh, that helps to use it for more than uh, two time series uh, as in the case of univariate time series war also require time series to be stationary so stationarity is the condition for war if each variable in war is already stationary uh, then each equation uh, in it can be estimated by OLS if the variable uh, if the each variable is not stationary we can estimate war only for the first difference of the time series if the individual variable in war are non stationary but are contigrated we can estimate war by taking into account the error terms as well which is obtained from the contigration regression uh, this lead to vector error correction models as which we already discussed uh, in case of uh, error correction model earlier uh, then there is one more uh, interesting phenomena in uh, time series models that sometimes we are interested to know the causality of one of the variables type how uh, we normally uh, till now we were discussing the cases when y were caused by x or when we change x y were changing but we never say that uh, can it be the other way around that when we change y what happens to x or uh, the two way causation so uh, there are uh, certain uh, models that do check that uh, that how uh, x uh, uh, if, uh, how x causes y and how y causes x so uh, these are called uh, Gringer causality there are tests for it we can apply that and we can see that how uh, this two-way causation work uh, and for that we can use a Gringer causality test uh, and as uh, it's an overview so I'm not going uh, to more detail into it uh, but uh, if uh, in case you are confronted with a problem where you have to find which variable is causing uh, which variable so then you have to use a Gringer causality test so let me move back to the uh, main slide uh, in panel data model, uh, very quickly, uh, panel data uh, refers to a case when we have uh, uh, panel data regression models are based on panel data uh, and panel data are observation of the same cross-sectional or individual units but over several period of time. So in panel data, we have one cross-sectional and that cross-section is studied over uh, uh, several period of time. It could The cross-section could be of individual or could be of certain units of, of be countries or something else so uh, uh, we can think of a balanced panel in which the same number of time observation for each cross-section unit are available and we can think of unbalanced panels as well so uh, uh, there are certain advantages of panel data that it's more rich compared to uh, individual or uh, individual time series data sets or uh, cross-sectional data alone uh, because it combined the beauty of both cross-sectional and time series data uh, and uh, it also helps to increase the sample size it helps to study the dynamic changes in cross-sectional uh, uh, units over a period of time uh, it also helps to study of more complicated behavioral model including the study of uh, time invariant variables so uh, uh, the models that are very popular in uh, panel data are two. One is called fixed effect model, the other is called the random effect model. Uh, these are the two models and these are very frequently used. Uh, there are slightly uh, different versions, uh, there are slightly different uh, conditions for applying fixed effect model and random effect model. The choice between these two are determined uh, using certain tests. However, that's uh, beyond uh, uh, the, the scope of uh, discussion we have at this stage. So uh, we need to know that uh, panel data requires certain different models to be used for uh, modeling the data and uh, that there are two kind of models and the choice of each model could be based on certain text going back to the original model and finally moving to the survival analysis uh, uh, the survival analysis has uh, a lot of application but mainly uh, in uh, uh, medical field uh, there are various names of survival analysis uh, such as duration analysis event history analysis reliability or failure time analysis transition analysis or hazard rate analysis there are various terminologies associated to these kind of models uh, such as the uh, uh, hazard rate or uh, certain uh, more uh, uh, duration variable uh, these are also called duration analysis so uh, in order to understand that I will try to give you a certain example uh, that may help you to understand what do we mean by that so uh, let's say we have a patient 
So let's say we have uh, a ill person. A person is ill. So we are observing him over a period of time. So this is time. This person is being given some dose of medicine X1. Also some special diet X2. And we are observing it over a period of time. And then we see the outcome that he will recover. Recover. He remain the same. No change. Or he become worse. So for that kind of analysis, we use survival analysis. Uh, so we can find the probability of being recovered given the explanatory variable over a period of time. We can think of having uh, remained the same or uh, becoming worse. So uh, this is a survival analysis. Uh, there are a number of uh, terminologies associated to the survival analysis as I tried to mention on previous slides such as event. So event consists of some quantitative change that occur at a specific point in time. Uh, then we have duration spell, we have due discrete time analysis, we have continuous time analysis. These are different versions of doing survival analysis. There are various models available in survival analysis however uh, at this stage uh, this discussion is beyond the scope of uh, our current level so I will I will leave that discussion uh, slightly incomplete at this stage given that uh, this was an overview so coming back to the main slide so that was an overview of our uh, time series econometrics topics that are provided in our textbook I started with the stationarity and non stationarity of the time series then I uh, uh, throw some light on contigration and error correction models then uh, uh, introduce you with the arch and garch model uh, slightly comment on the linear regression box Jinxon model and one model for forecasting uh, then the panel data models and the survival analysis so uh, this was pretty much the time series econometrics uh, topics covered in your topic so that was uh, since it was an overview so I'm not going to uh, as I said it at start as well uh, we are not going to study it in more detail uh, I hope you like uh, this topic and it created some interest of, uh, of, le of learning these topics uh, in your mind and I hope uh, and I will wish that you learn these topics uh, uh, in more detail uh, if I got some time I will be making videos of these topics separately and will be uploading in this particular playlist so for that you can uh, subscribe my channel and uh, uh, you can stay connected for that uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, I'm very much grateful for your patience during all this course uh, uh, following me through all uh, these weeks and following all these lectures uh, and I hope you find this course useful uh, for your uh, practical life later on uh, when you move to your career thank you very much and I hope I see you in my new videos thank you